Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. <clears throat> so today, like the title implies, I'm going to be working on making some branding irons. Well, technically I am making a set of branding irons to create one singular brand. The first part that I'm working on today is the main portion, which is my shop logo. It is going to be the anvil portion that I'm working on today. And then I'll have another video that will come out, uh, part two in this series, which will actually be the laurels, or the decorative parts that surround my anvil. So you make sure that you want to check in on both those. Uh, so real quick, what I'm doing here is I'm just going ahead and band sawing out a couple pieces. Now, this happens to be about eighth inch thick material, or three mil, and there are a approximately four inches long or a hundred mil long and about two inches wide or 50 mil. So the first step in this is I'm going to create essentially the base of the anvil and now I'm going to create a hollow form here and I'm going to talk real briefly as you watch what I'm doing here about the reason why I chose this material that I'm working with. Now I'm going to be using the edge of this material to create the outline of my anvil for branding. The tricky part of doing this, oh in this part here real quick, I'm going to explain we're making the curved portions for the waist of the anvil. And then the top will just be a flat piece. But the trick to take in actually making a branding iron is you need enough mass to the metal that it does not bend readily or very easy. If you have small parts or not enough mass you have to back them up with more mass. Of course the counterpart to taking and backing them up with more mass is it takes longer to heat them up because that mass draws away the heat from the branding iron. So you need to kind of split the difference between the two. So I went with 8th inch thick material to create a really small clean edge when it brands in, so this way it's easy to hit. But I went with it 2 inches wide, or 2 inches deep if you will in this case, to allow it to have enough structural support to where I'm not getting bending and warping. So hopefully that'll make sense when you're designing your own branding irons. And then this year I'm just working on making a handle for the branding iron itself. Now this is going to be a bit forged and a bit fabricated. Uh, so, you know, it's it's going to take on both forms, a forged and a fabricated look, but that's okay to have forged elements that you weld together with modern processes. Especially in the case of making your own branding iron. As the goal here is to get the job done and it's for your own uses. Not necessarily for it to be a 100% forged piece. Now, if you don't have a welder, there's a lot of branding irons you can make by forging stuff and bending things all around. But in this case, it was just easier to get what I wanted by having everything forged, like different elements, and then go ahead and welding things together. So here I'm just wrapping around just a simple loop handle. So this way it can hang on the wall or on a peg whenever you're done with it. Keep an eye out for a future video on this where I take and instruct how to do this little tangent uh, hook end here. I'll have a video out on that. And once it's out, it'll be linked up in the description down below. So there we go. So we got our handle made. I put a little decorative twist in there. Now we're going to start outlining our pieces. Now, if you notice, they're not cut exactly to size. That is to allow me to weld them up, and then I'll trim off the excess with an angle grinder, and then clean up all the profile after everything's been welded. So there we go. We're just getting these all welded in. Good to go. And now I'm going to work on my little small cross part, which is indicative to my touch mark and kind of my shop. Since it's Christ-centered ironworks, that's how I follow my brand. Now you may be asking, why are you making a branding iron, Roy? Well, the simple answer is my, my shop 
when I make an item for a customer, I like to put them in handmade crates. And those handmade crates I like to send to send to customers and and ship my items in them. Which at the onset doesn't seem too terribly important, but it's kind of gives it that extra little uh you know, it gives it that extra little bit of value for the customer. They get a really nice crate that they can choose to display it in, or they can, you know, pack away and use, you know, for any other purpose. It's a really a pretty, pretty crate. It's a cedar crate that I put it in. And so therefore it is nice to take and have this nice branding on that crate to kind of give it more of an old timey feel. So that's why I need the brands. Now, I had an old branding iron, but I decided that uh, it was not working out as well. I was having mixed results, and I may go over that in another video and, and go more in depth about building branding irons, per se, and just kind of their general construction. But this, I just wanted to show you guys how I was making my own here. Now, I'm welding all this to a back plate. Once again, this is to take and mitigate any risk of it flexing or twisting or bending and therefore not getting an even brand. But here we go. We'll get this all welded up and we'll go give it a try out. So here we go. You can see I've got it to a nice red temperature. This is a nice dull to almost black heat. This is a dull red, almost a black heat in actual real time. And there you go. There's a produced result. So anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for part two. God bless you all, and I'll catch you on the next one.